and I will be following along while Brooke, uh, Brooke and I have known each other now for some time, and uh, she brought Wendy and I up to her palace, which is also known as her <laughs> office up in Michigan, which was enormous, the number one mortgage company in the comp- in the country. And to be, it was like Google, guys. It was absolutely amazing. I've never seen anything like it. It literally is like the movie Google. Thousands of people work for this this company, and it was just it blew us out of the water. And so Brooke also has been with Disney. And when her and I were brainstorming this uh, idea of coaching every other Thursday at eleven o'clock, this is a short and sweet. We're going to dive right into it. It's a twenty to thirty minute type of thing. We want to give you guys value, give you information. And the first thing Brooke said is like, "I just did this Disney experience." And it's about customer service and relationships. I was like, oh, this is a no brainer. So, <laughs> Brooke, I'm going to kind of let you take take over the, the show here and share with us your experience. Share with us a little bit about you and just honored to be able to have you here. And thank you so much for sharing today. Oh, thanks so much for having me. It's so much fun to like um, just connect with you all. And I've known Brock and Wendy a while now. And- Um, Yeah, so it's just a blessing to be able to share what I learned through the Disney Institute. So I'm the owner of Motto Mortgage Metro. Um, Brock mentioned that uh, we went to Michigan. Um, That is United Wholesale Mortgage, and it's the largest wholesale lender in the United States. They're our largest partner. So as a mortgage broker, they're my first choice for our clients um, when they want to have a home loan or get pre-approved, if they're like a realtor working with us, getting their clients pre-approved. So uh, we work uh, almost exclusively with UWM. So UWM has a, an amazing podcast called Good Better Broker, and it is available like on Apple Podcasts. Um, it is truly geared towards mortgage brokers, but it's open for everybody. And so they asked me to come on and um, be able to share about my time learning about customer experience through the Disney Institute. And um, I highly, highly, highly recommend this um, to everybody. And I actually want to take our team to the next one. Um, But about a few years ago, really, um, I got the opportunity to go down to Orlando and I'm originally from Florida. So I love Disney, uh, hence the ears. Um, and so I got the opportunity to go and study customer experience with the top Disney executives of the Walt Disney company. Um, and so to be in the room with incredible businesses, and I was for sure they're the smallest. They had like the state department there as well. And a lot of other huge companies like Google in the same room um, training. We spent five days in Orlando learning what customer experience really meant and the power of branding and um, so many other great principles that I'll share with you today. Um, But really today I want to focus on like how to, what I shared really on the UWM podcast was how to grow your business. And that's through customer experience and the importance of that. Um, So I went down there and the first lesson that we really talked about was in order to have a great customer experience, you have to have a great uh, set of core values. And if you have a a business that you run and you don't have a, a set of core values, then you're not really measuring um, your customer's experience against anything. It's kind of loosey-goosey, right? So UWM uses a great quote that says, like, if you don't follow a process, then, or if you don't have a process, you're not really following a process. So, or there is no process if you don't follow the process. That's really what it is. So sorry about that. But, um, and you have to have a process and benchmarks to measure your people against and to make sure that the, um, the experience for your customer is always consistent. Um, So we have a number of mortgage loan originators that work for us. And I don't ever want to get the call that one client has had a very different experience than what maybe my husband has provided to one of our customers. It tells me instantly that the process hasn't been followed. Um, And so the consistency and key to consistency um, on Disney's incredible record of customer experience is always based on processes and connecting those processes to the core values. So Disney had at that time four core values. Now they have five because they added inclusion and diversity uh, most recently. 
But the Disney Institute, if you go, they will show kind of their template for success and how you can apply that to your business, right? We don't all have amusement parks, um, but we have mortgage companies, real estate companies, and coaching companies, and lots of restaurants and all sorts of different companies. And so the, the beauty of the Disney Institute And you can also do these courses online, but I highly recommend you do the CX Summit, Customer Experience Summit, and that's how you get your foot in the door with Disney Institute. But it focuses on really creating your core values, creating your vision statements and values, and then understanding consistency is the key to customer experience, and you're only going to gain that through set processes. Um, So... Um, Brock, do you want me to share, you know, kind of um, service recovery and some of the other principles that I've learned, or you want me to kind of, I want everybody to feel like they can interject and ask questions as well. So one of the things I I will add to this, so when, when we're applying this and you'd be like, okay, how in the world do I do this in my entrepreneurship and my business and and whatever that might be. And so when I'm coaching and, and going through these, these questions that people ask, you said the most important thing, consistency Mm -hmm. and communication. So how do you do that in entrepreneurship world? And that's being consistent on, on Tuesdays, I do my status calls. Every Tuesday, a conversation is either having to somebody that's in my pipeline, having conversations with my past clients or or, uh, my clients that I'm dealing with now. But it's also on all elements, meaning I reach out, I try to reach out to the other agent. Maybe, I mean, Brooke, how many conversations do we have? Like, what's our check-in status? What do we have? Because I need to have a conversation with my client right now because we're either getting to an inspection or what's going on with the appraisal. All these things are happening. And so sometimes people say, well, what is this constant service or communication sound like the worst thing i had a conversation with an agent down in florida and and i love her to death and she's a new agent she's like brock my client is pissed at me right now i said well i need you to pick up the phone what you wait a minute you want me to they're mad at me i know but when we hide that's not what you need to do because that's what majority of agents do is like, it's, it's, it's a bad situation. It's not good. And so what we do is we go in the opposite direction. You need to have a conversation with them. You need to talk mm-hmm. to them. You need to share with them what's going on. And I think Disney and correct me if I'm wrong, but when challenges take place, you probably see more leadership out in the open. You probably see different things that are out there being like, Hey, we need to approach this. I like the, the fifth element. I guarantee you the fifth element wasn't there several years ago, 10, 15 years ago, because our society was different. Mm -hmm. And now we're having different conversations. Our world's evolving. So what does Disney do? They step up and say, hey, let's add diversity. Let's add inclusion. Let's add these type of things. So in a practicality, guys, that means having conversations consistently and over communicating and just set whatever it is in your calendar. I mean, Brooke, you're constantly having conversations with your clients and with agents, but that's what, that's, you know, what I would apply to this. And so those are my two cents before we moved on to the next one. Yeah, absolutely. So to piggyback off of that, you know, the Walt Disney World Company out of Orlando, and it's, a you know, it's even larger if you include um, Hollywood and California uh, or in Anaheim. Um, in Orlando, it's 75,000 employees. So imagine, you know, being over 75,000 employees trying to create consistency. If you did not follow processes, it would be a nightmare. Um, for us on a much smaller scale, we use Asana and it is a way that we have a checklist that every MLO mortgage loan originator has to follow. And then in Asana, we pull in the marketing side, which is Megan. Um, I come in for touches and client experience um, as an owner with my husband. So there's, and then of course there's Anna, our processor. Um, There's so many different people that are involved in the process, but the cool thing about Asana is if you follow the process and you have to, um, when you check off a task, then the next person can be engaged and they get a notification that, Hey, it's your turn to step up and do what you need to sending the gift, making the call um, those kind of things. And Disney follows processes for everything. Um, And I love to say that like when they have somebody who is not a fit and not following the processes, the best joke I ever heard, but it's what they really do is they bring them in, 
They try to coach them. If they're not coachable and they're still having the same complaints internally and externally with this person, they say, we invite you to find your happiness elsewhere. And (laughs) I I love that. And it's true Um, because if you listen to Bob Iger in masterclass, I actually have him on in the back. Um, I always have like masterclasses on usually in the back so I can at the office so I can learn and then here's something and I'll, I'll, you know, pull over there and like take notes on leadership and business and things like that. But Bob Iger talks about that too, that in order to have a great company that's growing, you need to be very careful with the people you invite in to your culture at your office and your traditions and your story. And so in the very beginning, as you grow your business, if you bring in somebody, one or two people that are negative or they're not the team player. They're not following the core values. And again, again, you are measuring this person's performance or lack thereof against your core values. If you have no core values, then you have nothing to measure them against. So we measure our people's success against our core values, our, our vision, our value, our stories. Um, and so it's it's very important that you follow that, um, that you follow your core values. Um, but anyways, that's let me a add great- some- Let me add something to that because you might be on here and somebody says, well, Brock, I, Brooke, I, I'm just by myself. I, I don't have that team that you have guys. When I was starting, this is how complicated it was Tuesdays in my Google calendar. It said from 10 AM to 1130, I follow up with my clients. I follow up status calls. That's it. And then you just put a list of your clients. Well, Brock, I don't have any clients. Okay. Well, you really got some problems, but don't worry. There's a solution for that too, because in our brain, we come up with excuses and I'm going to give you reasons that you still like, you still know people. You still can have conversations. I don't care if it's aunt, uncles, friends, somebody to status call up and just say, Hey, how you doing? checking in with you. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like the, the, the definition of status, if you don't have clients, it's just forming a habit. I'm reading Atomic Habits right now by James Clear. And he talks about that. And I do it on the morning motivation call at 815 of just attaching it to a habit. So that way it's like, okay, when I do have clients, my calendar already says 10 to 1130, I'm doing status calls. So now I actually have a client. So now I'm going to call my client. Mm-hmm. It's just forming these habits, guys, so you can engage with people to be able to have conversations and consistently do it. And over, I tell people all the time, it's better to over communicate to under communicate, because if you do it the other way around, you're going to get in trouble and then you're going to get fired and they're not going to write you a nice Google review. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. I mean, Matt Ishbia, the CEO of, um, uh, of UWM, United Wholesale Mortgage, she always says, you know, the best separate from the rest, right? Mm-hmm. And so you have to separate yourself in how you communicate. One thing I'm really proud about of our people at Modern Mortgage is that we consider people families, not files. We say that all the time. You are a family to us. You are not a file to us. We actually tell people, if you are emailing me and you're asking about a status update, do not give us the address. Yes. We need to know the person's first name and last name because they matter, right? It's a family that is getting financing to buy a house to make their life better. So don't give us an address. Like a lot of times uh, closing attorneys will say, we need an update on so-and-so da, 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 address. And we're like, yeah, we don't know who that is. We need to know the the, uh, the name of these people because for us, their family's not files. So that's very, very important. Um One thing I want to share about, and I share this all the time, because I think this is one of the biggest nuggets I ever gleaned from Disney was everything cannot always go right all the time. Okay. It's just not possible. We're humans and we live on this side of heaven. So things do not always go right. So Disney understands that as well. Um, And so there are times that things will go wrong in their parks or in the organizations they own, like Pixar, ABC, I mean, you name it. Uh, Lucasfilms, they own so many, so many different companies with a lot of different employees. So the most important thing, and I shared this with UWM as well, is we do not practice service recovery. We practice plus experiences. The world practices service recovery. So I like to give an example It's somebody's birthday in your family. You go out to a nice steakhouse. Uh, Everybody orders their steak. Yours comes back like a lump of coal. So you can't eat the steak. You have to send it back 
Service recovery is just having the steakhouse bring that steak back to you the way that it should have been done right the first time and then saying, I'm so sorry. Well, you've sat there the whole time and watched everybody else eat their meal and enjoy their meal together and you have missed out on that. So they've actually harmed your experience as a customer. Disney does not do that because you should have had that good experience the first time. Um, it's a plus experience at Disney and here at Motto Mortgage. So if something goes wrong, you know, in that example, for example, you receive that great filet mignon cooked the right way, plus you receive a hundred dollar gift card that says, I am so sorry that we didn't do it the right way the first time. Please come back and give us another shot and you can have dinner on us. That's a plus experience. And if you've ever been to Disney hmm. and something wrong has happened, that always happens. And I, I actually didn't share this on the uh, UWM podcast. I'll share it with you guys. The best story that happened to us is when our little boys, uh, when we would go to, to Disney, we loved to go to the Animal Kingdom Lodge because we would get a room that was on the Savannah side. So you could open the door, go out on the balcony, and you would see giraffes and zebras and animals. And the kids thought this was so cool. I do too. So one time, our little boys, when we went, they were like three and five or like maybe two and four. They were really little. One of them threw their shoes off the balcony into the area with the animals. And of course, it's in the morning before we have to go to Magic Kingdom. So. I'm scrambling because their other pair of shoes are wet <laughs> from going to another park where it rained. So the kids are like, well, one of them is without shoes. So I called the front desk and they said, you wouldn't believe, honestly, this happens a lot. Like people drop bathing suits, shoes, all sorts of stuff. Um, but it's in the animal area. So we're going to do our best to get it, but we might mm -hmm. not be able to get it. Right. Because there's like water buffaloes out there. You don't just walk out there. And um, so they call me back after breakfast and they said, we have a gift for you um, at the front desk. So if you could come by the front desk before you leave for the day, we just want to give you something. Okay. It is our fault <laughs> that our kids lost their shoes. Okay. But we showed up and they said, for your trouble, and we're so sorry, we can't get the shoes because they're in an area with like a dangerous animal or something. Um, we've already purchased you guys new shoes and here's a gift card for a $200 gift card for the park for your trouble. That is the mm. plus experience because it really wasn't their responsibility. I mean, in this instance, they didn't fail like we did. I love that. That so, is, yeah. I, I've never even heard of a plus experience. That is, yeah, that's so, really good. Yeah. And I share this with you because for example, we can't always have great closings. We have, you know, the vast majority are super simple, easy. We go above and beyond in communication, going over the CD with people. Well, we had a lady that even though we went over the CD with her, the closing disclosure, um, she was about to close. She just did not make the connection that she needed to bring a little bit more money. And so when she showed up, she was panicking and calling us and saying, you didn't tell us that we needed to bring another $2,000. And we said, yeah, we went over the, the CD a, a number of times with you. And then it's also signed a number of times where she sees that amount. And But we didn't tell her she was wrong. <laughs> you know, like you're not going to do that to a customer. Um, we said maybe there was a misunderstanding. And so let's see how we can make this right. Okay. And what we did was we were able to flip some things around and give her some credits and made it right. And then on top of that, we are sending her what's called a bumpy cake and they're from a bakery from 1875 up in Michigan. And it's, it's going to say, it actually goes out today to her. It's going to say, I'm so sorry for the bumps in the road. We didn't, we didn't want your, your, your closing to have any bumps at all, but unfortunately it did. So please accept this fun cake from us. And thanks for, um, for being our valued client. That's a plus experience versus you know, she closes, we never call her back. <laughs> you know, we didn't move things around to help her get a credit. We said, tough luck, you signed it. It's not my problem. You know, everything is is our problem if we want to give good customer experience. And the other thing that I'll share is UWM has a pillar. It's one of their six pillars, their six core values is you need to learn how to be a thumb pointer, not a finger pointer. 
And so Ooh. I train our people to be thumb pointers. It's on me that you didn't understand the CD. I am so sorry. I told her brother, who is the realtor, hey, you know what, Renzo, it's on me. I, I should have, I guess, gone over and over and over to just one more time, you know, and maybe she would have said, okay, I need to get two, $2,000 more out of savings for the closing. Um, so we own it. You know, we don't point fingers and we treat people like family. Um, but I just wanted to share that we don't practice service recovery. We practice plus experiences. I love that. And uh, for those that know, I'm a huge book reader. I'm actually not a book reader in all honesty. I was terrible in English. I'm actually trying to take an English class. Wendy makes fun of me all the time. Um, I'm, I'm terrible in, in English and I never was a reader. But in order for my vision and my goals to grow, I have to read. I have to be able to read. I, I coached your, your team the other day, uh, Brooke and Lake. I had to read a lot. I had to reread some of my books. I had to go back and research certain things on what I do. And the book that strikes me, that triggered when you said this, it's called Extreme Ownership. Mm -hmm. And and it's with Jocko. And Jocko was in the military. And in the military, when something bad happens, unfortunately, lives are lost. Okay, mm -hmm. there's an extreme circumstance and a consequence that takes place in the military. So when they say extreme ownership, there's that's the extreme part. Okay, mm -hmm. in our world, mistakes happen. And how you took this plus experience triggered to me the extreme ownership because when I read that book, and for those that are in my circle and for those that know me, I will sit on the, and I, he uses no pun intended, I will sit on the grenade. Whether or not I agree with it, whether or not I feel that it's my fault, if somebody that I sent you screwed up, it's my fault because I should have maybe interviewed that person a little bit more, been involved in the conversation a little bit more, gone to the appointment with you, gone to the inspection with you. I should have done something because I 100% agree with you that it is us. No matter what takes place, it falls on us to be able to take the ownership. And one of my pet peeves is when people blame other people. It drives me insane. Like, I can't, right. like, and it's like, no, the buck stops here. And when people, I've, every time I've taken ownership, not one single time has the person cursed me out. I just had to do it yesterday because I forgot to text somebody on a Monday on a situation that I forgot to text. And I had to tell them yesterday, say, listen, I, I, I apologize. I thought I texted to you on Monday and I did text it. I just never hit sent because my phone rang and I forgot to go back and hit send. But it's my fault. I, I didn't say, well, you don't understand. I was texting you and then my phone rang and then I had to pick up my son. And then I was like, no. It was my fault. I should have texted you. I'm going to do a much better job of doing that. And guess what they gave me? They gave me a thumbs up. And they called me up like, Brock, don't worry about it, man. It happens all the time. I actually screwed up on this the other day too. Like mm -hmm. they just want you to take ownership in what it is. And I think the plus experience, like I was just trickling, like thinking things in my head, like, man, how can I do that? Like, so thank you for triggering that in my head because that is my aha. That is my like, okay, I'm going to work on my plus experience. So for those that are on this call, maybe there's something that you got, or if you like hearing that, let us know and get, um, you know, tell us what you think. And if you're watching the recording, you know, whether or not you like the plus experience, because to me, that was, that was pretty impressive. I love that. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. The other thing that I'll um, share is, you know, when families go to Disney, um, they're looking for that once in a lifetime experience. Uh, some people have saved their entire life to take their family to Disney. So Disney is clearly aware that there is really a, a one shot, you know, to making this a very memorable, wonderful experience and vacation for them. Um, it translates really well to us too. So realtors get one shot to make a great impression. Um, mortgage loan originators like us get one shot to make a great impression. Um, we get it that things happen and that kind of thing. But if you follow your processes, you follow your core values, your team understands and is trained every month and reinforced on those core values and the way you expect business to be run, um, you're going to have 
great experiences. Occasionally a bump in the road here or there, but you can own that and fix it nine times out of 10. So um, I think that goes for us as well. And then always in the customer experience, I love to like just pour into our clients. So like, for example, I've got um, some clients this morning and they were like, we did this, this, and this that you asked us to do, you know? And I'm always like, you're amazing. You're the best clients we've ever had. You know, I I'm so grateful for you guys, like the best, the best, the best, you know, like, and they're laughing, like texting back, you guys, you guys are so funny, but I want to make sure that we brighten their day. Right. You know, there's specific people planted in all departments of Disney. Like I'm thinking Magic Kingdom, for example, their entire job is to identify somebody walking through that land and make them feel special. That's the only job. So that's your job. Whatever land God puts you in, like whether it's real estate, mortgage, whatever, your job is to make people feel important and valued and loved and, and full of grace for sure. Be, be grace filled towards everybody because everybody's got battles going on that they don't share and make their day better. You know, that's really, really important. And that's, I mean, that's the key to life. That's why you were born. It's to make this world a better place. And so I love that Disney does that. And they might do that by giving a child a balloon, um, you know, or, um, doing like bringing over a character and that character gives a child a big hug um, or, or maybe like spends time with a child that has special abilities. You know, there's all sorts of things that you can look for. Um, and the last thing I'll share with you is listen more than you talk. You know, God gave us one mouth and two ears and you wouldn't believe all the times I'm talking to somebody on the phone and they'll say things like, this other mortgage company never gave me a chance to talk to them and like share my story and what I want to accomplish. And you're actually taking time to listen. And number two, while I'm listening, I'm hearing things they also want to do. So maybe it's like, actually they want to purchase, do a refi cash out to turn around to buy another investment property. So there could be actually like three loans in that for our company and for this person that we can structure the right way and then Brock knows this, that when I'm talking to his client that he sends my way, number one, I'm hyping up Brock and I'm 100% loyal to him. And number two, I'm telling Brock, hey, I don't know if you know this. He probably does. But I don't know if you know this, but this person is sharing that they actually want to purchase do a refi cash out and then turn around and buy another investment property. So that's two purchases for Brock's business. But if I didn't take time to be available, to pick up the phone and to really listen, then I would miss out on deals and so would Brock's business. So really taking time to spend time with people and focus on what matters to them, like versus like whatever profits you want to make or whatever, the money will come if you love what you do. So focus on that and then be loyal to your partners and say, hey, I heard that he kind of wants to buy an investment property or she really wants to buy a condo on Lake Norman or whatever then that's another opportunity for then Brock or the realtor to say, hey, I heard you had a great conversation with Brooke that you're thinking maybe long-term, we're going to do this, this, and this. I'm, I'm your person, you know? And then it, it again, reinforces the customer experience and the loyalty you have to your referral partners like uh, realtors and, and mortgage loan originators. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's, <clears throat> I, I think the word listen is, I, I, I forgot the book, but I think it was Born to Win, Zig Ziglar, talks about that, that we have one mouth and two ears. Right. And we also, uh, I remember reading that if you think about our elementary days, okay, we think about our middle school days when we were in school, right? I learned that when you actually think about it, they teach us to read. They teach us math. They teach us how to speak. We have speaking engagement classes. They teach us how to write. But there's no classes on teaching us how to listen. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very important to understand this. As we get older, we filter even more because mm -hmm. we have our cell phones. We have all these other distractions out there that we're not really listening. Mm -hmm. And if you actually listen to people and shut your mouth, and turn off all the distractions. You can learn a lot of things from different people. And when I read that in the book, I started to actually listen more. I'm more attentive. I'm purposeful. 
I actually have to practice this because I'm a D, D in the personality. So I'm constantly thinking about like what I'm going to have for dinner tonight mm-hmm. instead of focusing on the moment. But I think your point of listening is so, so valuable and so important that if we actually pause, listen to our clients, more importantly, take time to call them and engage with them and listen to them. We would get more information. We would get better relationship. Think about significant others for crying out loud, even our kids. If we listen to them instead of like, hold on a second while I'm texting and listening. Oh, and trying like, can't do that. And so I think the listening thing was very, very important. And I know we're already at the, the 31 minute mark here. And I'm always, I, I like to hold true to our time because time is valuable to people. Brooke, the last minute or so, what would be something that you would share with people on here? Yeah. Oh gosh, there's a lot of good stuff. Um, well, I want to kind of speak towards Barbara's point in the chat. Um, she said, you know, you can't, you can't do everything yourself. I totally agree. Um A great nugget for time management that I learned um, about a month ago, I think, was um, people would say, I can't do so much in a day. Well, if you get a piece of paper out and there's, um, you can divide the day in uh, 15 minute increments, um, you can stop every 15 minutes and jot down what you did. And in, in, at the end of the day, if you go back and review, you probably have a lot of downtime and things where you weren't making your calls or you weren't, um, you know, like holding yourself accountable to some of the goals that you really had for that day. And so I think that's a great time management strategy, but 100% you're correct, Barbara, that you can't do everything. So bringing in key people and investing in them to help you um, and help move the ship forward is really important. Um, Megan Barry is on this call. She's our marketing coordinator and she's amazing at her job. And if we didn't have her, she assists in touching the customer, right? Sending gifts, writing handwritten cards, um, doing open house baskets, for uh, every realtor that we work with um, and, and even ones that we don't for outreach. She does so many different things to help me and my husband, Aaron, touch our clients in meaningful ways. So um, it at some point in your business, it's great to either outsource that or bring it in-house. I love having Megan here because she adds so much value. And anybody who works with us is a, is a member of our family. So like, I, I love that. And so um, I... I think it's well worth investing in people that want to come in and really make people's lives better with what you're doing through your company. So um, that that kind of would be what I would share also. Um, but yeah, the, the other thing that I'll just end on real quick is I had an executive business coach years ago tell me every single day, Brooke, you need to set aside time to dream. If you just go about your day and you're just banging out all your to-do list items, you're going to be so empty by the end of the day, like your cup will be empty and you won't have had any time to refill it. So in the morning hours before it gets crazy at the office or at home or at a coffee shop, um, my husband, Aaron, and I actually went this morning to a place down the road, sat outside at a table and had our one hour of dreaming and business planning. We can't even do it at the office because, you know, we'll, we'll get distracted. Um, you need to have time every single day that you dream. It is incredibly important to help you continue to accomplish your goals by setting aside that hour um, to dream. It might not even be an hour, but set aside time every single day to dream and to move your plans that God's given you forward. So that would be kind of uh, a piece of wisdom that even Walt Disney would have agreed with. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, I'll add my my two cents here at the very end. Barbara, your 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 question that you put out there and leveraging what uh, Brooke said, what I've learned is when you don't have the financial capacity as well to hire in, I found something I can do for free. And so I go find people that I want to become. I Google them. I look them up on Facebook. And I've been doing this for about two months. And this is all free. And I start asking people, hey, my buddy Justin in Michigan, who do you know that could help me with this? Who do you know that I should follow on YouTube and on Facebook? Next thing you know, I'm leading, I'm going. And I started following this guy. And my coach, Michael Burt now, who's right here in Nashville, who I just signed up for, has helped me. For two months, it was free. All I did was start finding people that I want to become and I start Googling it. And that's why technology in this world is amazing because there's nothing I can't do. 
Okay. We talked about this morning in the call with Jim Rome that says, why not me? And I'm, I'm a big advocate of that. Why not me? I could do anything I put my mind to. So I find people and next thing you know, I'm on his YouTube. Now he's talking about me on his Facebook and it's just the coolest thing. He calls me. And this was before I even signed up to be a coach with this guy. And I just became that. And now I'm immersed with it. And now I'm learning. I don't have the thousands and thousands of dollars that he has right now to do what I want to do. But guess what? He's giving me strategies. He's giving me tactics. I'm learning how to do it. And it's up to me with my work ethic to do that. And the second thing I'll follow up with is there is no dream police. Every morning I take 20 minutes and I walk and people sometimes say, well, aren't you running? That's a, that's a training program. Okay. When I want to go work out, I'll go train. But when I want to dream and I do it in the morning when it's quiet and I get to listen to the birds, I just walk for 20 minutes because in that moment, I'm not like out of breath. I'm not like, oh, I got a cramp. Oh gosh, my legs hurt. How much longer do I? That's what I think about when I'm running. I don't want to think about that. I just want to dream. I listen to my own music. There is no police inside my head. I tell it to Wendy all the time. I have some crazy stuff in my head and there is no police saying, Hey, uh, Brock, I'm sorry. You can't dream that far. You can't dream that far in advance. That's way too much out of your, that you can't even afford that. How are you thinking? No, I can dream that. And Monday through Friday, I dream that five days a week. I spend 20 minutes dreaming, thinking, praying, meditating, whatever I want inside my head. And so I challenge people, Pamela, who's on my team. She's like, well, Brock, I can't do 20. Okay. What can you do? I can do 10. Okay, great. Do 10. If you can't do 10, do five. But dream. I love that idea that you said there. All right, guys, it is 1138. We went a little bit longer than what we said, but sometimes it just gets really exciting. Does anybody have anything they'd like to say, a question for us? You can put it in the, in the chat that you have, or you can unmute yourself if you have a question or give us a thumbs up if you like it. Give us a heart. Give us a thumbs up in the Facebook world or in our Google. We really, experience, we really appreciate that. Heather said the plus experience. She loved that and, loved the, and she loves your ears. So that's Thank awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Does anybody have anything that they like to share with us? We've got a lot of people on Facebook. Thank you so much, everybody. A lot of hearts out there. Thank you. <laughs> Does anybody have anything they like to add or say? We don't get upset with you if you don't talk. <laughs> well, good. Hopefully, we're able to answer something. <clears throat> If you like us, Brooke, what's a good contact information if they got questions or anything that they want to ask you in the financial world or just some sure. of the things that you said? And what's what's a good way um, that they could reach out to you? Yeah. So you can always just call me directly or text me. I'll always pick up 704-493-1415. 704-493-1415 is my cell phone. Um, there's a business number on the um, on the website, www.mmmetro.com. Uh, mmmetro.com. And that same phone number, that business line comes to my cell phone. So either number works. Um, text me, call me anytime I can help. Would love to, to meet you and to help your business grow too. Brooke, a couple people just asked me what states you work in. I got a couple people out of, st- out of North, sure. not in North Carolina. What states do you work out of? Yeah. So um, at this time, and we're still adding states all the time, but it's North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. So those four states, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida. But um, I have partners in all 50 states. So anytime you have a deal, even in Hawaii, we know people, um, you can always have um, kind of your point of contact is me. And then I can get you connected to people that I know, like, and trust. Awesome. Alyssa, who's listening, she's my KV core coach. She's out of Florida. So Alyssa, nice. she'd be a really good person for you. So, yeah. Amy, thank you so much for being on here. I just saw Amy and Alyssa here make their post. Uh, Heather, Claudia, Megan, Wendy, thank you guys. Greg was on here. Mike was on here. Um, I was trying to look at some other names that were on here. So in the Facebook world, I couldn't see everybody, but uh, thank you so much. We're going to be on here in two weeks. Um, We'll let you know what our topic is going to be. If you have a topic or you have something that you like to ask us, be like, man, Brock, Brooke, could you please help me out with this? Let us know. Um, If we don't know the answer, 
cancer, her and I will cultivate something or we'll make up something. I don't know. We'll figure <laughs> out something, but uh, definitely appreciate it. For those that have watched the recording, thank you so much. If you have comments or anything else, feel free. Um, if anything in the life coaching world, business coaching world, feel free to reach out to me in the real estate world. Um, love an opportunity to be able to help you or know somebody that we can help. Please feel free to reach out to us. Brooke, thank you so much for being on here. Definitely appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you all. Nice to see you. Thank you for taking time to to listen to us and learn with us. So thank you. All right, guys. Have a great day. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Make it productive. Brooke, I'll talk to you soon, I'm sure. Thanks so much, guys. Appreciate y'all.